we just love helping brewers push those boundaries. We're challenging the status quo. You're getting to try a brand new beer that you've never tried before. We're just tapping the surface here. It's extremely exciting. So our brand is all about being customer first. And so what we do to help brewers innovate is we offer a unique variety of strains. In addition to providing you know, the strains that people know in the industry, it was always our focus from the beginning to also find new strains, create new strains, and bring you know, new, new strains for brewers to play with, give them new tools to make interesting beer and help make their beer stand out. Sundew and Bonanza are extremely exciting. Sundew is this ripe red fruit bouquet of flavors, while Bonanza is this extremely banana heavy profile, which is very unique in itself. So we've had a couple close partners, breweries on commercial levels and some home brewers who've kind of experimented with these and so far they seem to love them. Mark came to me and presented a few different strains that they had in development and the one that really stood out to me was Sundew. We actually modified the very first recipe that we brewed here at Rockwell. Uh, it's a beer called Simple Needs and the Sundew just really shined in that beer. We are really trying to hone in on their like ester profile, like really pushing that ripe, ripe red strawberry, the apricot and the plum, just really bringing out the true character that those strains have. We've kind of created a brand new strain with the strawberry flavors that can be used in any English style beer. So your IPAs, blondes, uh, hazies, uh, you can go kind of even down the stout porter sort of routes as well. So it's, it's kind of just created a whole new tool with a whole different palette of flavors that never really existed before. We've been asked countless times, how do I get more banana in my and my Hefeweizen and get less phenolics, that peppery cloviness. So what we decided to do was to take the traditional Hefeweizen strain and remove a phenolic gene, and what we got is all the banana. We're finding out ways to recreate that Hefeweizen using our Bonanza for people who are, are going deep on the milkshake IPAs, pastry IPAs, uh, and those sort of things. So no more worry about pitch rate or temperature oxygenation. We're just gonna give you a strain to work with and you'll be able to dial in your esters from there. Now they have this whole new tool that's just a lot of banana, 100% banana, that they can mix in with you know, banana bread or banana cream milkshakes and all these other sort of IPAs people are pushing the boundaries with. Creating these new tools and putting them out to the public, you never really fully know where brewers are going to take it. So it'll be interesting to just watch people's creativity and where they run with this. But I think what we envision these trains to be is kind of new styles. It's really exciting for me to try something new for the first time, but it's even more exciting to watch the brewers go through that process and to see how excited they are with the end result, that they created something brand new with one of these tools. Mar and D Crew did a phenomenal job uh, essentially researching and then executing on, on this project. Honestly, we were curious, like what happens when you remove phenolics from a Belgian strain? But what was interesting to us would be to change that gene in Belgian yeast to uncover flavor combinations that we can't taste in their phenolic, because that phenolic aroma and compound has a tendency to actually mask some of the other aromas that the yeast is producing. A lot of the Belgian strains come across with a little bit of like a clove or peppery note to them, and that's because they carry the gene required to make for vinyl glycol, which is that clove compound. If you were to go to your spice cabinet and take out the, the cloves uh, that you might use in you know, some baking and just take a big whiff of that, that dominant aroma compound is for vinyl glycol, and that's the same compound that's in Belgian yeast, so it, it really smells like clove. POF stands for phenolic off flavor. So when we talk about them being POF minus, literally, it's just that they don't carry a functional gene to make phenolic character in, in beer. We just took a very simple approach to modern genetics, which is now pretty widely used and available. It's the CRISPR-Cas9 system. It's a genetic editing tool, basically to very specifically target one region of the genome and make a change. And it's kind of like an accelerated breeding approach. We could make a similar strain through hybridization, but it wouldn't be as specific to that one change in the genome. When we went to make these strains, we wanted to make sure we were doing it the right way and for all brewers to feel comfortable with our approach. 
So we went to the FDA and we filed a grass notice. These are all kind of ingredients you're using already. They're grass ingredients and this yeast will be as well. What's exciting to me in particular about this phenolic project is that it's really hard to say in advance what the strain is going to be like without that quality because it's a very dominant quality. So there's just kind of a sense of discovery when we do this. We don't quite know what to expect when we do it, but we know it's going to be different and it's going to be interesting. The POF Minus project didn't really start or end with these strains. We played with a lot of different Belgian strains and German Hefeweizen strains to see what our favorite POF Minus strains are. So the two we have chosen really push banana and ripe red fruit. But we are working to see if any others come up that we're really happy with. I think, you know, we'll get feedback from brewers as, as soon as they see these strains and they'll probably give us some ideas on which strains to try next.